What's up, guys? This is Shadow Master here, Brady Vave. Today we're doing Wave Deck with the Supreme King. So, yeah, let's go. Now, then, where we're starting off is, well, JD Yugi dead. JD Yugi. Mostly the guy who the Supreme King is. This guy right here. Now, some people are going to be asking me, well, if the Supreme King plays evil hero cards, how the fuck is Deku supposed to get the evil cards if Jaden Yugi's dead? Now, if you guys do not remember from the series of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, Jaden Yugi always gets reincarnated. His past lives, he always got reincarnated after he died. Now then, that means Yubel gets to come with Deku exactly. Now, she knows all of her reincarnations, well, names and stuff. So yeah. Now then, we're starting off as Deku. He is mostly at the doctor's and checks to see if does he have a quirk. Now, he has been having weird dreams of, well, dual monsters. Mostly the elemental heroes, exactly. Now, mostly the doctors say that your son does not have a quirk, exactly. Now, now that Inko says that, well, he's been mostly having weird dreams about um, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, exactly, for some reason. And they always been a reincarnated dream, exactly. Now, the doctor says what type of card exactly. He asks, well, Deku exactly. He says they were um he says they were called elemental heroes. And the doctor says that, well, the only person that actually had elemental heroes were, well, two people. Astro Phoenix and Jaden Yugi. The person that actually did almost defeat the King of Games, but he lost still. Now if you're having those weird dreams, but he did die and stuff, it's a little weird. He's thinking over this head. Now, he says that, mostly, you might have to check see your son has... Well, he tells her to cover her son's ears, exactly. She does. He says that you might want to check see does he have a screw loose. And he's trying to make this the easiest way possible. If I were my son hearing of cards that were played by a deck duelist, I would do the exact same. Saying, what the fuck? Is this man calling my son crazy? If he was calling my son crazy because he likes chocolate, then that make, then that's going to become my nerves. Now, now then. Deku immediately, well, sees a dual monster spirit, Wing Kuribo. Now, immediately the doctor sees Wing Kuribo on Deku's head. Immediately as a solid form. Ingo sees this too. She uncovers Deku's ear and they see Wing Kuribo. Now then. This doctor does play some Yuga and know about Yuga cards. He says that, wait, that's Wing Karibo. And Wing Karibo's playing around with Deku's hair. Now, the doctor thinks this is a quirk or a misunderstanding or something. Now, the doctor tells Inko to bring your son over tomorrow so we can check see does he have a quirk again. Just checking, because our scares might have undetected exactly. Now, the next day does come. Deku does go to the doctor again, and, well, they do go over his test. They do a test and stuff, and, well, they state that he doesn't have a quirk, exactly. The doctor says that, A, I'm going crazy, B, your son has an ability for some reason, it's not a quirk, or C, I don't, I really do not know. Now, no. when Karibo, well, can become solid and, well, a dual spirit. Now. Let's go to Deku's preschool, exactly. Deku can only summon Wing Karibo. He can't summon the art element to heroes. Now then. Mostly, everyone's showing off their quirks, exactly. Everyone asks what the heck's Deku quirk, exactly. He says it's, re it's really weird, though, but the doctor says it's not a quirk, but... Emily Wing Karibo comes on Deku's head. They see it. Emily, some people... Well, they really do not know what the heck that is. Some people say it's like a hair with eyes and wings and stuff. And, well, the teachers explain that that's actually a, well, dual monster. Mostly, that monster was wielded by Jaden Yugi. Mostly, the person that she went up to the King of Games. Now, the King of Games is in his late 60s and 70s. But, well, he always has a good perspective, though. Some people would call him a creep, some people would call him a pedophile, but still. Mostly, the majority of the planet would call him a good person. Because he cares about his friends and his monsters like they were in his family. So yeah, that would mean Solomon Muto has died. Sadly. He could have been really great. And I fucking don't... How old is Solomon Muto anyway? How the fuck... How old is he? Like, 80? 90? I 
think he's like 70 or 80. This is going to tell me. Now, Bakugo says that that thing is a villain, a villainous quirk, exactly. Deku tells him that, well, I don't really have a quirk, exactly. Dr. Say is not a quirk for some reason, and I really do not know why. Now, mostly, everyone just says he has a villainous quirk, because that thing can, well, we really don't know what it can do. Now, Baku asks the teachers what the heck that thing can do, exactly. Point at Deku's wing, Karibo, on top of his head. Now then, this wing, Karibo... Knows Jaden Yugi, and it only stays around Jaden Yugi as like a dog. Now, well, the teacher explains that Wing Kribo can, if well, say that well, mostly it in the card game though it mostly protects you from any damage at all by effects or battle damage at all. Can be negated, but still. Now, now that everyone just thinks that this thing looks really cute, but well, people would try to pet it, but. Wing Karibo would not allow people to pet it exactly, because it does not trust them exactly. Because he knows that, well, mostly what Jaden Yugi does stuff, mostly. Jaden Yugi did pass. You're going to be asking how the fuck did he pass exactly. Now, let me explain. Jaden Yugi passed by a heart attack exactly. So, yeah. Now. The heart attack, well, was really weird and stuff. So, yeah. Now. Yugi Miller was sad about this, he did go to Jane's funeral, and what well, all of his other friends did, Cyrus, all the rest. Now, let's continue on. Now then, let's get around, well, let's check to see, when Deku is getting attacked by Bakugo and his three-eyed friends, or his two-eyed friends, though. Bakugo is saying that stupid wing whatever Karibo thing is going to get hurt anyway. Now then, Deku is trying to defend this guy behind him. Bakugo's friends try to attack, but immediately, they see, guess who is it? It's Elma Tahiro, uh, Elma Tahiro Wingman. Yeah, Elma Tahiro Wingman. Or Avion, sorry. Elma Tahiro Avion. Now then, they see this. It is the exact same size as All Might, exactly. Or, yeah, exact same size as All Might. The immediately says that that thing, wait, what the heck is that? And, well, they try to attack Deku, and but Elmet's hero Avon would not allow it, mostly using his quill cascade to while well, protect Deku like a shield and his friend behind him. Now, you're gonna be saying that that's really cool and stuff. He doesn't really need a dual disc. Now, if he does want to use traps and spell cards effects like super polymerization and the rest, he needs to well figure how to use those when dual this. Now. Mostly Yugi Moto does own the card shop and he does well keep it like it is like his grandpa used to have it. So that he even would cry. Because well he misses his grandpa. Cause he's been playing a big role in his life. Bow seeing all that stuff. Yes, the Egyptian god cards do exist in the Sacred Beast. Now. Now then. Mostly there's three Bakugo Bakugo's friends just say, I'm out of here, and they just run away. Mostly I went to your avion, just, well, well, scares Baku a little bit, and Baku runs away too. I went to your avion, gets his, well, quills, and they disappear. Now, I went to your avion, does turn back into a dual spirit, so Deku can still see him. But yeah, now then, Deku goes home. He tells his mom that, well, mostly, you know how, like, I could summon this weird... Karibo thing on top of my head, and she says yes, saying that, well, this weird, tall bird thing, though, mostly protect me from Baku attacking me, exactly. And, well, mostly, he does have some scratch marks on him, still. Now, she says that I'll be calling Baku's mom to make him apologize. Baku, I mean, Deku says, no, please don't make him apologize, stuff, stuff, stuff. But she says, no, he did a bad thing, so she he should be punished. Now, she does help his, well, thing, his mark exactly, all the scratches on him. Now, mostly, she says, so what the heck were you talking about again? She, he says that, well, this weird tall bird guy with wings exactly will protect me exactly. It must have been part of my quirk exactly or something. Now, now, Deku says it's right there exactly. He's pointing at it. Now, Eko does get scared, but, well, she sees not attacking him. Or her. It's mostly helping Deku get band-aid up. Now. She says, huh. 
So this thing's not attacking you at all. And Deku says, no, it's mostly been friendly at all, actually. It only scared Bakugo a little bit, but, well, it protected me and this other kid, though. Now. Now then. I'm sure that Avion does help Deku, and he's done. He does turn back to a dual spirit. Now. Now then. Let's jump into the future. When he's around 15 years old. Now then. Bakugo knows he can only summon two weird monsters. They do know their names, Avion and Wing Karibo. Now, Deku has been ostracized from his classmates because he has a weak quirk. He can only summon weird things exactly, dual monsters. And everyone does not like dual monsters in their class. In fact, they even hate the game. Except the teacher exactly. The teacher does like Deku, but well, Deku's just been, well, an outcast exactly. Anytime when people would try to beat him up, Avion would save him, or, well, Avion, well, couldn't save him exactly. A, he was in the spirit world and did not know, or B, he just, well, mostly Avion wanted to teach Deku how to actually fight, but, well, not trying to interfere that much in his life, but Avion had to help him each time and stuff. People would call him a wuss because he had his quirk to save him. He wouldn't fight like a real person, with two fists. Now. Deku's just been shy and, well, mostly over the years, shy and, well, has a weird, well, glare at people, exactly. Mostly when he stares at people, though, exactly, they get scared. And they just run away. Now, the teacher walks in their classroom. He says that, well, class, it's the end of the school year, and, well, and before you can finish that sentence, everyone shows off their quirks, exactly, except Deku. When Krivo is still a dual spirit. It's just on Deku's head always through his life. Now. The teacher says so long class though. And he's going over the paperwork. Saying that to Bakugo. Don't you want to be going to um, UA? And he says yes. Because I'm not going to become a pathetic loser. With a stupid quirk like Deku exactly. He can only summon a weird bird thing with wings exactly. And a tall wing thing exactly. Now then. Mostly the teacher says that. Do you mean wing Kribo and Avion? And well. He says, where the hell they're called exactly? I really don't give a shit. In fact, I'd rather him to become a villain anyway. He'll become the weakest villain possible anyway. In fact, he would have to actually get our villains to help him exactly. But he would have to get 90 to 50 villains to actually help him with only one villain job. Now, everyone does laugh about this. Now. Now then. Let's, well. The teacher says that, okay, Bako, stop making fun of the well, Majoria, or you're going to the principal's office at the end of the school year, exactly. And this would really not look good on your, well, if you say if you were going to UA, it would really not look bad if you were a bully kid that, well, sorry for saying this, Azuku, I meant Majoria, but, well, without having a quirk, exactly. Now, now then, Bakugo says that you can just say it anyway, he's quirkless. He's just a stupid loser anyway. Now, the teacher says you say that one more time you're getting, well, going to the principal's office. He does not. Now, I would really love to see in My Hero Academia if we actually could see, um, mostly the high school things though and stuff. Where Bakugo and him would actually have more things in the high school thing. That would have been so cool, but I understand they want to keep it short and stuff. So yeah, they could show this a little bit backstory of this, like, high school year or middle school or something. So yeah, now then, let's continue on. Now, Deku, well, is just keeping to himself. Bakugo shuts up. Now, he says, Midoriya, aren't you going to UA? And he, well, says yes, exactly. Now, most everyone likes bullying him because he's super shy and he's really vulnerable. People just hold him down and stuff and try to beat him up, but sometimes Avion saves him or Wing Karibo would save him because, well, Wing Karibo can save battle damage, so Deku would not take the pain of it. He only gets scar marks, and that's it. Now, now, the bell rings, and whoop, everyone's dismissed. The teacher leaves, and Baku and his two are friends, whoop, corner Deku, when he's packing up. Now, Baku pushes him on the ground, and says that you'll be nothing anyway, Deku. I hope you just become a villain anyway, because if I become a pro hero, I'm going to kill you anyway. It says one thing only, if you even think of trying to get to UA, I'm going to kill you. If we even get to fight or spar, I'm going to try to kill you 
and hurt your body so much that you're going to get kicked out of UA. Do I make myself clear? Now then, Deku was about to cry. Emily Bakugo said, oh, you're going to cry, Deku? And he punches him again before they leave. Now then, Deku's full with sadness and mostly anger. Now then, Emil does help Deku up. He does. Now then, Deku's just walking home before, well, Bakugo and his friends know how Deku takes his path. There's an alleyway. Now then, they grab Deku between an alleyway and they're beating him up. Uh, sorry, hump, exactly. Now, Bakugo pushes them, and a portal opens, to the spirit world, exactly. Bakugo, mostly Bakugo, sees this, and Deku gets pushed into it. The portal closes. Now, this was Yubel's doing. Because she knew that Deku would never become a fighter, exactly, because he does not like hurting people. But the Supreme King does. Now, Deku is mostly in a desert, exactly. Well, he sees only sand. He says, wait, where the heck am I? Wait, I'm not on Earth. And, well, he's looking up and he sees, well, a lot of things. A lot of dust stuff. Now, he does see three things in the skies. Those things are harpy ladies. Not harpies, that's disgusting. Harpy ladies. Now, Deku immediately sees his Wing Kriba and Avion. Now, he immediately says, Wing Kriba, Avion, what the heck is happening? They can't technically speak exactly. Wing Kuribo can make a little few noises, but Avion sees those, well, dual spirits, mostly. Harpy Lady. Now, Deku says that great. I need to figure out a way to get home. He's just walking through the desert now. He checks in his book bag, does he have anything else? Mostly, nothing except a water bottle and half eaten sandwich. He says, shit. Okay, I can scurve this water though, but the food. Crap. Now, Avion and, well, Wing Kribo, well, disappear for some reason. Now, Deku's, well, tired and stuff. Now, he's mostly saying that, great, I'm all alone. I can't even do anything right. I can't even become a pro here with this stupid quirk anyway. Thanks to that stupid Bakugo, I'm screwed in here. Now, Deku almost falls, but Yubel saves him by grabbing it on his boat back. Deku looks behind him and sees Yubel. He merely says, wait, a monster? And, well, Yubel says, no, my name's Yubel. Now then, mostly I'm your only friend here, exactly. Every single dual monster spirit eats humans, exactly, or anything that comes here, they try to kill them or do anything else. But, well, you won't believe me exactly, but you are Jaden Yugi's reincarnation. Deku says there's no way I am, because Jane Yugi's been dead for a long time. She says, really now, I know every single Jane, I know everything about Jane Yugi, because me and him are friends, exactly. And my role is, well, each time when Jane Yugi would die, you would get, he would get reincarnated into a different body. So yeah, he died, you were born, and that's why you're the reincarnation. I'm stuck with you forever. Now, mostly you have a dark power in you. You can control it and become the Supreme King, the ruler of all these dimensions. Wait, there's more? Yes, there's more dimensions. There's 12 of them. The world from humans, spirit world, and some others. Now, mostly some of Jane and Yugi's friends did stay behind. Like Bastion, mostly the guy who played Water Dragon, exactly. Now, mostly I'm your only friend here. Mostly you're going to have to listen to me exactly if you don't want to die. I mean, you would die in the reincarnation. I really don't want to explain to the new reincarnation that you died because you wouldn't really listen. And Deku says, fine. Now, he says, what the heck does he have to do exactly? She says that, well, Bakugo, I can't technically take you out of this dimension exactly. I can travel between the dimensions, but you can't exactly. Without a dual disc, exactly. The Supreme King's dual disc. That thing can open portals to any dimension. Now, Saying that, you're going to have to come become stronger. Before she can finish saying this stuff, immediately, they see a monster. Mostly, it's the three harpy leaders that were in the sky. They're saying, well, 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 look what we have here. A human. And a knockoff uh, harpy lady. And they're laughing about this. Now, 
Mostly, you both said stay away from him exactly. Because you guys would know what the name is exactly. The Supreme King. You really hard to know this name. It was a legend technically. Because the Supreme King has not come back to this dimension in a long time. Everyone thinks A, he was dead, defeated, or some other shit. Mainly the Harpulies say that that's a myth, exactly. Mostly the Supreme King doesn't exist. Now then, Deku's fed up and tired with this shit. Now, he just says, get out of my fucking way before I kill all three of you. Now, he has the eyes of the Supreme King. Everyone knows what the eyes of the Supreme King look like, and they do tell each other. Now then, one of the Harpulies say that, wait, that's the Supreme King, and... Only the R2 Harpy ladies say that there's no way that's the Supreme King. The Supreme King's way taller and is mostly, well, more ruthless. Has a darker cape and cool, well, seems like a vampire looking costume exactly. Now, Deku's man hands immediately spark with electricity. Now, he sh tries to shoot at one of the Harpy ladies, but they dodge. And evil hero, uh, evil hero Sparkman comes in. Play. Now, his hands turn to fire and he's firing this at the fire players, but now evil hero percentrix Avion, Bubble Man, Clay Man, and Avion. Now then, Deku is smiling at them. They all see this. Now, the army ladies say that we need to get out here now. Before they can well escape, Spark Man fired an electricity bolt at one of them. Avion fired a quill cascade at another one and Percentrix fired a fireball at them. Now, you built his technology not manipulating Deku, but will make him stronger. Now, she does take a human form exactly. Now, you're gonna be asking, mostly like this human form exactly. Like this. Mostly, she's taking the form of Jesse exactly. She will be having his, well, Crystal Beast deck. Now, Deku will have the Sacred Beast cards, too. Now then. Some people are going to be asking, Hey, I should make the Sacred Beasts come to, well, Deku when he gets becomes a hero, exactly. Or, well, after the tournament's done, I should let Deku go to the Dual Academy and get the Sacred Beast cards. I was thinking of that, but no, because Chainsaw Shepard would not allow Deku to get the mostly the Sacred Beast cards. So, yeah. Now. Mostly, she's smiling about this. Now. Deku, well, says, great. So these stupid harp ladies are on the ground and begging for their lives. Now, he says that, well, you got one way trip to the stars, exactly. Now, the evil heroes fish off the harp ladies, destroying them, exactly. They do go to the stars. Now, if anyone does not watch Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, please go watch season two, wait, three, yeah. Season three, actually. Because season three has, well, you bell, wait. I think it's season, wait, season 2 or season 3, I can't remember. But yeah, most of these show off the evil heroes, and saying the stars mean saying them to a different dimension, where they're captured and they cannot stay at all. Now, now then, Deku is laughing about this. He is making snark remarks about the Harpulies, because they were so weak. In fact, he says that if I got to fight them again, I would make their pain more sufferable. Now, some people are going to be asking, is the Supreme King talking? It is, actually. But, well, he's technically not taking control of Deku's body. This Mostly, Supreme King and Deku have technically not fused exactly. Technically, Deku has the snark marks and cold militias like the Supreme King. Doesn't give a shit about anyone. Except Yubel, exactly. Now, Yubel says that now we have to go to the castle, exactly. Now, Let's go to Bakugo and his friends. Bakugo says that shit, 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 we're all fucked. And he's just saying that their friends say, you're fucked, Bakugo. We weren't doing anything. We were just beating him up. You pushed him into that weird portal thing, though. You got him sent somewhere. And really, Bakugo says that, no, you're, we're all fucked. Because if I get in trouble, I'm taking you two down with me and everyone else in our class. You guys can't become pro heroes either. So if I can't become a pro hero, nobody does. Now, Bakugo says that, great, we need to find somebody with a portal quirk exactly or something. But he says that, wait, wait a second, we really don't, we don't have to tell anyone this, we can just lie. 
their friends say, yeah, we can just lie to the cops if they ask us any questions. We can just say we don't know, we can just say that we don't know where he went exactly. So yeah, now then, they're, they handshake about this, say that we're not speaking to this anyone, right? And they agree. Now, Bakugo's going off. Mostly going, and well, he gets attacked by the sludge villain. Now, all the heroes are trying to save De Bakugo, I meant. Now, All Might sees Bakugo trying to get out, and he actually almost does. He's using the explosions to get out of there. And he finally does, and he's using the explosions to go up in the air like a rocket. Now, All Might buffs up and grabs Bakugo. Jump in the air and grab him. Now, he puts him down and says, you're alright, kid. He only uses a Detroit Smash to, well, spread the sludge bomb. Now, All Might says that you are really heroic and stuff for getting yourself out of this, exactly. Now, All Might says to meet him at the beach tomorrow. Exactly. Or in the morning, exactly. Now, Bakugo does agree. Let's get back to Deku and Yubel. Now, time moves faster and, well, move faster in the spirit world than the human world, exactly. Now, Yubel's teaching Deku how to use his powers, exactly. How to use different types, or trying to summon his evil types of monsters. Now, some people are going to be asking me from Yu-Gi-Oh, exactly if anyone does play Yu-Gi-Oh, exactly, saying that, when the hell are the fusion forms of the evil heroes coming? Now, they will. Mostly, I wanted to give Deku like a cool costume exactly, like this, the Supreme Kings. Now, there is different evil heroes. I've got to remember all their names from different, well, things. Now, let's continue on. This one's actually my favorite because he actually has a sword and shield. That one is fucking cool as shit. Just saying. Now, now, Deku is mostly in, well, not, he's tackling the territory where his castle should be. Yubo points at his castle and tells him that's where it is exactly. Now, they won't allow you to go in until you duel somebody there and scare everybody. It must be conquer everything here. Deku understands. He's just walking in with his high school uniform on though there. Now, when the duel monster spirits see humans exactly, but he cannot tell that's Yubel disguised. Now, one of the dual monster spirits grabs Deku and says that, Great, we have a human here. Let's show him what happens to humans. Exactly, in the dual, the, the spirit world. Now, Deku just says him to one thing only. He says, put down me, exactly, you stupid dual spirit. And immediately, the mostly monster exactly says that, Wow, we actually have a human that actually blacks talk me. He punches Deku in the face. Deku's just smiling. The mostly dual spirit asks him what the hell is he smiling about. He says, well, you you got one way trip to the stars, exactly. Now then, he really calls out evil hero Sparkman and Avion. And Resident Tricks of Claimant and Bubble Man. Now then, this dual spirit does know all these names. He really sees himself surrounded by these evil hero monsters. Now, some more dual spirits do see this. Now, they only know one person who plays evil heroes, the Supreme King. Now then, people are whispering around saying that, wait, is that the Supreme King? Did he? Wait. I remember he died exactly, he got reincarnated. Everyone knows that the Supreme King always gets reincarnated if he dies. Now, everyone thinks this kid is not the Supreme King, but they think he might have stole the Supreme King's deck. But they see he doesn't have a dual disc. That means he is the Supreme King. Now, Emily the Dual Spirit say that, Dude, you're fucked, that's the Supreme King. Emily the guy says that, No way, that's not the Supreme King. He says, Really? Look in my eyes, exactly. He does. Now, he says, Wait, you are. And he says that, Well, Remember what I told you exactly? You got one way trip to the stars. He tells Bubble Man and Avion and Strange Six to attack. They all do. But Strange Six throws a fireball. Avion throws his quill cascades, or his quills, and while well, Bubble Man fires his bubble blaster. Now, this kills the du dual spirit by seeing him to the stars. Now, he says that, does anyone else want to get one way trip to the stars exactly? Now, everyone's out of deck his way. But they are asking who the heck is this exactly. Now, 
Yubel sells, says in her voice that says, Do you not remember me exactly? She transformed back into her real form. Yubel. Now, they all know Yubel is, well, almost the person that actually used the scene of defeating the Supreme King. They are scared of her more than the Supreme King, but equally. Now. Now then, let's continue on. Deku is walking to his castle, exactly. The news, the news has been spreading a little bit, but not that fast. Now. One of the guards to the Supreme King's castle immediately block him say that, Who the hell are you? Immediately the guard sees this guy's eyes. It's the Supreme King. He says, Oh, sorry, Supreme King. And, well, Deku says, Yeah. Next time when you try to do that to me, I will say to the stars. Now. Deku sees his armor, exactly. Or his costume. Now. He sees it. And it's way too big for him. He has actually readjusted to his size. He does. Now. He has his helmet though, and he's just sitting on his throne. Smiling, and well, Yubel is just in her, well, Jesse answered form. So yeah. Now. You're gonna be fucking asking why the fuck did she take this form exactly? Because it's way easier for Deku exactly. Now. Now then. Let's just see, what else? Now, some people are gonna be asking, well, how the fuck does Deku supposed to get revenge on Bakugo? If he cannot open portals yet. He will soon be opening portals with his dual disc. Now, if everyone does not know, oh shit, I need to find a good, clear picture of his dual disc. I really wouldn't do that picture or something, but well, right there. His dual disc, when he can actually spin around enough, though, or spin a little bit, and well, it can actually open portals, but he cannot do that yet. Now, I think. We're going to end off here, because I have to record... Wait, which one do I have to record next? Man, it sucks. Sucks, Daddy. I mean, what, what what the fuck did I just say? I have to record three videos. I have to record... Yo, Lantern Deku's next, actually, I'm recording. Uh, Supreme King Deku. Jesus Christ! Fucking 48 views? Jesus, you guys really love Supreme King. Now... This has been the Shadow Master. Goodbye, and please tell me if you guys did want a part two to this. Now, I'm going to be recording Yellow Lantern Deku. I will have to actually research what about the Yellow Lanterns I need to know, and how the hell Deku's going to operate a Yellow Lantern ring. Now, this has been the Shadow Master, and goodbye. By the way, guys, you I meant uh, Doomslayer Deku is going to come next. After I'm going to post an AMV for that too. Now, goodbye.